Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, how to insure yourself against the FTSE 100 falling. Now, why would you be thinking the FTSE might fall? Well, several reasons. If you look at the FTSE 100 chart recently, you will see that the FTSE has been pushing against all-time highs. The relative strength indicator is up near 70, which is sometimes a sign that the FTSE could dip. And if you're a fan of looking at the FTSE against the pound, well, this chart's a bit difficult to read, but essentially at the end it shows a line with the FTSE near record highs, the pound near record lows. That's all you need to take away from that, really. And that is a difference that some people would be nervous about. Now, what can you do? You could sell all your shares, but that's never a good thing to do. That's like market timing. And anyway, that means you've got to buy them all back, pay the transaction costs, you might be hit with capital gains tax. It's a bit of a nightmare. You could do nothing, switch off the TV, ignore the headlines, and that will be a fair enough approach. Or you might decide to take a little bit of risk off the table, as we call it, by hedging. There are quite a few ways to do that. In this video, I'm going to focus on one, the option, the put option. Works like car insurance in a way. So if you think you might crash your car, you buy an insurance policy. The deal is you pay a one-off premium in return for cash compensation if the worst happens. And if you don't crash your car, everyone's happy. The insurance company gets a premium and you keep your car intact. Put options work in a similar fashion. Now, a bit of jargon. There are technically two parties to an options contract, just to give you the jargon. You are going to be the person holding an option, like buying car insurance, you're not the insurer in this example, and it's going to be the right to sell the market. Now to translate that, what you're basically buying is something which will give you cash compensation if the FTSE falls a certain distance. Okay, basic outcomes, worth remembering this, bit like insurance, and then we'll go to an example. If shares rise, you won't need that option. You won't need an option on the FTSE falling, you'll just put the option in the bin, you pay the premium, that's it. So you've lost the premium and any commission. If shares fall, you'll probably exercise the option, we'll look at that in a moment, which will mean that basically you'll make a cash profit on the option offset by the premium you pay and commission to some extent. And if shares stay static, you'll probably not need the option either because this is protection should the FTSE fall. So, quick example. In action, let's say the FTSE is at 7,050 points, about where it was when this video was made, and you own 125,000 pounds of shares. You buy two puts. Why two options? Why two insurance contracts? Well, because the way these things work is they have an activation price called a strike, and they're priced at 10 pounds per point in terms of the cover they offer you. So, if you were to buy two options with an activation of 6,775 points on the FTSE, at 10 pounds a point, that's a bit more cover than you appear to need. You've actually bought 135 odd thousand pounds worth of cover against 125,000 pounds worth of shares, but that's not a problem necessarily. Now I mentioned a premium per option, let's call that around 1,400 pounds. I'll ignore commission for the sake of this example. And let's say the FTSE does indeed then drop 1,000 points from here, from 7,050 points. So there we go, we need the insurance. How much insurance have we got? Well. The effect on your portfolio from 125,000 pounds of the FTSE dropping 1,000 points from 7,050 to more like 6,050, take it from me, I've crunched the numbers, is a loss of around 17,700 pounds. Now, I said you get cash compensation from exercising the option. How's that work? Well, basically, the option takes the difference between the activation price there and where the FTSE's ended up there, when you choose to cash it in, if you like, times 10 pounds a point, that's where I get the gross profit of 14,500 from, minus the premium. You lose the premiums anyway, a bit like car insurance, the premium's gone. So your net gain is 11,620. Now that is not a full hedge against your losses, but it's a lot better than nothing at all. So there we have it. Now, some people might be interested, some of the techies out there, in how the option looks, visually and on a chart, and just a couple of extra points to throw in here. Well, basically, there is the payoff diagram for a put option. If you've never seen one, don't worry too much. Key facts really are that the option makes you money when the index is over here, okay? You sacrifice the premium when it's over there. And just a couple of points to note, in that zone, the option is worth exercising just to recover a bit of the premium you've paid rather than throw the premium in the bin. But really, things get interesting around here because here you're into making money from the option and the further share prices fall, the more you make. And there's a break-even point where it's kind of you know, basically 
broken even as a, as a deal, strike minus premium or about 6,600 points. Now, why am I telling you all this? It's just to illustrate that you need the market to move for activating the option to actually make you decent money. But that's the case with, I suppose, insurance products. If you only do a little bit of damage to your car, you don't use the policy, you fix it yourself. Now, things that will drive the premium. Well, option premiums are driven by moneyness, amongst other things. So you'll notice in my previous example, the activation price was below the level of the market. That makes it an out of the money option, as it's called, which is a little bit cheaper than one that's at the money, where the activation price is the same as the market or in the money, the opposite. Time to expiry, the more cover you want, like insurance, the more you'll pay. Volatility, the, the higher the volatility underlying index, the more you'll pay for an option. And don't wait, if you wait for volatility, you'll pay more than you would while markets are quiet. And finally, dividend yields and interest rates have a mechanical effect on option premiums too. Probably more important, possible headaches. Why isn't this a perfect hedging tool? Well, over on the hedging, I mentioned that, you need to pick the right number of contracts for the cover you need. Cash settlement, so you get your reward from an option, if I put it that way, in cash. You need to do something with that cash then. Do you get differences between the way the option premium behaves and the underlying index sometimes, it's called delta, and portfolio matching. If you're not trying to hedge the FTSE 100, a FTSE 100 index option may not be the right choice, logically speaking. Lots of ground cover there and lots of questions. So editor at killick.com. And if you want to see videos on some other ways to protect yourself if the markets fall, please go to killickexplains.com.